So, um, before I start talking about YQL, YQL evolved from a sister project that still continues called Pipes. So, who here uses Yahoo Pipes? That's cool. So, this is the, this is the, this is the thank you for sticking your hand up and using Pipes. Who are you? There's actually different sizes, so you might want to pick and mix later with somebody else who gets full. Ah, more conclusion. I've got some uh, some uh, laptop stickers as well, so if you wanted some of those, can you grab me later. So, um, when we think about building applications, what does an application consist of? You know, we've got these, you've got, you know, stock quotes, you've got notes apps, you've got weather forecasts, you've got maps, you've got all of these types of things that you like to build. And an application, very crudely, is uh, data manipulation and data visualization. You want to take data, you want to manipulate it, you want to give it to the user, and then have them interact with it. And obviously the important thing here is data. You know, this, is where it, this is what you need for almost every app. And there's lots and lots of this really cool data on the web. It's all over the place. There's RSS feeds, the CSV files are adjacent documents, um, there are web services, there are web pages which um, do contain very useful data. So if I want to build a mashup, say I want to build housing maps or something like that, you now I'm a developer, I'm going to build my app, and I'm going to take a map API, I'm going to put some images on it from Flickr, I'm going to do some web search to and I'm going to put um, a, bit, a little bit of weather on there. I have to build an app that connects to all of these points. Okay, this is the standard way you build a mashup. And, you know, I build a bit of code to talk to the maps, a bit of code to talk to Flickr, a bit of code to talk to Yahoo Search APIs, a little bit of a different way of calling the weather, because that's, uh, that's in RSS. So everything's a little bit different, and I have to kind of work out how I build all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but how, what, how do I actually work out what I need to do? Well, I go to documentation. I find these resources on the web. I find their documentation. I read about it. I learn what the URLs look like. I learn how to construct the right URL to get the right data. And, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the neck. So YQL aims to be the thing in the middle that binds to all of these sources. You don't need to know how to bind to each of these different heterogeneous sources. What you're going to do is you're going to send the YQL service that we have, a YQL statement that looks a lot like SQL. So select, describe, show, these types of statements. And we will do the work of connecting up and getting you the data. So thousands of web, ser web, web services, lots of web pages, lots of data, lots of different formats. And we want to make that easier. That's the goal of YQL, making it easier to get to the data that you need for your application. Often these services that provide the data, they thought this is how people should consume our data. This is what the data should look like. But often your application needs it in a different form. It's not quite the right shape. You don't need half of this extra field that's coming back. If you're building a mobile application, that's kind of even worse because you're, you're sort of paying the penalty of downloading all of this data that you're not going to use. You're just going to discard in your application. So you know, there's a lot of needs for filtering, combining, tweaking, and shaping data. Um, your app. So, YQL, hosted web service that Yahoo provides that takes a SQL-like language that I think many of you here are pretty familiar with SQL. It's one of the standard things we learn in CS101. It's not full SQL, so it's SQL-like. I'll just uh, give that as a caveat to start with. The nice thing is it's self-describing. You can go to the YQL system, you can type show tables, and it will show you all of the sources available. You can then work out, well, what parameters or how do I query a given table, you can just describe the table. It will show you what can do, what you can do with this table. So it's nice that you can do all of these things and it's real time. It's not batch based. So a lot of these systems traditionally have been you submit a query and you can come back to it sometime later and it will give you the data. YQL is a real time service so on demand will generate you the answer that you want. So these are the <coughs> statements that we support in YQL. You send these over on a, on a URL. So show, show the tables, describe what I talked about. Select is obviously the big one that most people will use. It fetches the data. We also have insert, update, and delete. So you can insert, you can change data on the web. 
using YQL, using sort of the familiar verbs, and use. And use is a way of plugging in community and developer resources uh, and extensions into the YQL system. So select doesn't look very surprising. Select from something where you're filtering it down and you want to maybe join it with a subselect across a foreign key and you want some limits and offsets. So no real surprises here. And that's what's great about YQL. It looks like SQL that you're familiar with. So I'm going to do a demo now. So this is uh, our homepage on YDN. So there's uh, links here for uh, documentation and links to our forums and uh, lots of other good stuff. Um, but I'm just going to go to the console. So the console is a tool that we developed that just all it does is actually issue queries to the YQL platform and just renders them back out. So you can iteratively, iteratively develop an experiment with the system. Um, where <laughs> it's got demo itis. Here we go. Wow, it looks like. So you can uh, iteratively develop your queries as you want. So the first thing that, that runs here is show tables. And you can see at the bottom, this is the output from that command that was sent to YQL. You can see it's, a, it's an XML document here. And um, show me Flickr tables, geo tables, um, basic raw accessing data tables, um, lots and lots of uh, Yahoo services, but also generic ways of connecting up to standard web formats like web pages and so on. Um, as you change the queries that you're doing, the uh, query that you would actually send to YQL to get the same data is output here in this REST query. And you can see here that this would uh, do the same thing. So, and so, you know, this is the same data back here. Okay. So down the right hand side is a big list of tables so you can explore and click through them. Most tables have examples that run with them to show you how to get going. But what, what I want to do now is just step through some of the example queries here on the right. You can all do this in your own time um, to sort of point out interesting things about the language. <coughs> so one of the things you heard about this morning um, are the, um, the updates APIs and social profile. You'll hear about those things. So in Yahoo, you can get to anybody's profile data. That's the information about themselves. Um, using the profile API, or you can just use YQL and use a table. It's much simpler. So select star from social profile where grid equals me. No big surprises uh, here. Me is just a sort of special way of identifying myself as the user at Yahoo. And you can see what happens here is it dumps out you know, all of my private information for you all to see uh, today. So um, very unsurprising, get my friends. So we have another table called social.connections. And again, so what I'm asking here is, find me all of the connections in our social graph that I own, that are my connections. So where the owner grid equals me. And you can see it's a very similar envelope that comes back. Um, so all of these uh, connection objects now. And these aren't terribly useful. This is a grid. This is sort of the uh, obscured identifier for people in Yahoo. So uh, rather than giving out people's Yahoo IDs, which would enable anybody to contact you via email and so on, Yahoo uses this. Um, obfuscated ID called a GUID. And so if I want all of my friends' profiles, how do I do this? Because there's not really a lot of information about my friend 3CX, whatever. It's not terribly useful. So this is where we can start joining across web services. So this is uh, subselect join. Select star from social profile where the owner of that profile, the GUID, is in. And I'm going to choose the GUIDs from the, the social connection, the previous query I did. If I just take that out, You'll see here, what we're doing is we're projecting pieces of the XML structure that I care about. So it's dropped, only in this case, a little fragment of the, of the overall size out, but I'm now just asking for the GUIDs. And then, um, then I do this join, it's done in real time, and now I can see all of the uh, private information for my contacts. So their interests, the schools they've been to, their profiles, their images, all of this stuff. So a big set of... Uh, that's not private information, is it? That was private information. That because I'm connected to these people on my graph, I can see more of their information than if I was unconnected. So it's, it's the standard social model that when you connect to somebody, you get to see more of their information than if you didn't. 
have established a connection with. So in this particular case, I'm actually querying my graph because I'm logged into the console as me. So you're seeing it. If you went and queried the same information about the user, without that you would see less information. It would actually depends on the viewer um, for who. So like a double up a different viewer than that? Yeah, a different viewer would get different information. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a little bit more, more on projection. You saw that had a vast amount of information coming back. But what if I just want the nicknames of my friends? I just want a simple list. I'm just going to project the, the nickname. So I say select nickname. And you can see now that that big list that we had before has got much more compact. And uh, you can see the names of my friends or the nicknames that they give them. The best thing about YQL is once I've done this, it's kind of the end of the presentation. I have a lot of other slides, but by, by, by the end of this, you'll pretty well know how to use it all. So um, we support uh, a real pipe. It took us took pipes a long time to actually get a Unix pipe into a system, but this is the, the nearest that we can get. So you can pipe the output of the actual YQL command through other functions that we've added into the system. So this one's very simple. This just gets uh, the last count um, of the tail. I'll do a few more examples of that later. But it's not just a social graph in Yahoo, it's anything in Yahoo. So I want to search Flickr for cats, because that's what people do with Flickr, they search for cats. <laughs> and what I get back here is the answer to that search. It's very easy. Now I didn't have to work out how to call the Flickr API, I didn't have to work out how to sign it, I didn't have to do any of that stuff. I just said select star from Flickr, a text equals cat. Will it honor login credentials? So, for um, example, if you wanted to get uh, data out of a service that required, uh, like, basic authentication, yeah, can I'll you get provide that? that? Yeah, I'll get to that later. So, the default way that YQL works, it has two modes of being used. One is public, and that's where you don't provide any credentials to use the system at all. You're just sending us queries. And the other one is using OAuth, which uh, you'll may have already heard about and you'll hear more about today and OAuth is a way for you to identify as an application the Yahoo user who is using you so the user will grant the application permissions to access my social network or things like that. I'm That's actually more interested in being able to access user supply authentication credentials to the third party service. Yeah we can do that too and I'll I have some examples of that later. Um, you yeah. got a string there you'll search on cat what's the sort of like your wildcard searching is that like built in? So, well, yeah, I'll nip ahead a little bit. So, <laughs> um, YQL does a combination of, so YQL doesn't have a real database. There's no database here that it's querying. It's, it's literally connecting up to online data sources. And what YQL does is a combination of remote and local filtering. And so, to think about that basically, the remote filtering is where we take pieces of our query and we give it to the remote web service and have it deal with filtering down the number of results. And then we have local querying where we allow you to filter it down even more. So you can do more complex expressions to get rid of data that you don't want. And so in this particular case, this text is actually mapping to, um, you can actually see the query that we make based upon the thing here. So api.flickr.com, you know, so this is, the stuff, this is what you would need to normally send to Flickr and the text is, is in this query parameter. So there's a mapping being made between the YQL statement and the downstream service. So it will be up to Flickr so, how to deal so with it. So that criteria will change if you select it from a different source of data. Yeah. It's dependent on the API. Yeah, exactly. So YQL does allow you to, and this has happened on some of the tables, people try to normalize the parameters into, uh, like query will always be the query across each different type of web search. Um, but it's, it's very much up to the table developer. And I'll, I'll talk about how people can develop tables later. When, when you say look at, look at what? Sorry? When you say look at, featuring look at, it's yeah. look, look at to what? Look at to what? Oh, local to what? Um, you, would, you would have to pass the local in that you were interested in um, filtering it down by, if the service supported localization. So we don't, we're not doing any great magic. We're providing a very useful tool on top of what the service is already 